So I will be seeing you one by one like this? I uh, yeah, will be asking you some questions one by one. Okay, perfect. Let's do that. Actually, uh, 100 students are watching you right now. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Thanks perfect. Hi, everybody. Wow. <laughs> That's very good. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Would you like to add or give like any advice to like artists that are not like that known and that are working on it to like become as big as you? Well, I would uh, hmm, I would say that uh, first hard work is a good uh, always a good investment. Uh, being confident, but not too much. You have to put yourself into question when it's not working after some time. <laughs> Like if after 10 years your work is not uh, recognized, then you have to say maybe I should do something else. Um, have the right contact. It's very important like to find the right people. So nowadays talent is not uh, that much special. You know, with the internet, you see talent everywhere. You see amazing things everywhere. Everywhere on Instagram, on Facebook, on the... With YouTube, you see so many incredible things. So I think talent is not um, it's not enough. You know, you have to find uh, to have contacts with the media, with the journalists, socially talented as well, and uh, talented in the, in sharing and in communicating. It's not enough just to be like a Van Gogh and draw and paint all your life, and uh, that you would be recognized when you die. You know, you have to move away from this uh, cliché from the graphic art, very sad cliché from the, of the graphic artist. So I would say that you, yeah, you, you have to have different skills. So hard work, communication, have a website, of course, or uh, a portfolio online, business cards, <laughs> and also to have some uh, competences um, in marketing or in economy. Yeah, I would say you have to always be curious, always be learning different things. Right now, I myself, I started doing video, you know, and it's a big, uh, I, I realized it's a big passion. Before that, I started with music and I always learned by myself, like watching YouTube, video tutorials, reading books, going to conferences. So you always have to learn, be curious. Talent is not uh, enough and uh, contacts and hard work. That would be my, my advice. And not listening to other jealous people. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. And honesty also, last uh, advice. Because if you are not uh, honest, it will always come back to you in a negative way. So, so you have to be realistic, but not, uh, let's say, cynical. You have to stay Positive, very important, and honest. Thank you. You're welcome. I would like to ask you, uh, when you started drawing, or like you know, creating arts, yes. did you ever see yourself like, becoming this, uh, like, this huge inspiration to like millions and millions of people? <laughs> like, uh, no, for me it's... Uh, it's, it would be a good thing uh, to, to inspire uh, millions and millions of people, but I think it's not possible <laughs> to inspire so many people in the art world. But of course, it would be a, a huge uh, achievement. But I stay humble and, uh, and uh, I think that uh, you have to, to stay focused on the reality and... Uh, if I can inspire a cup, if I can inspire my family, it would be already good. And if I can inspire some students like you, it's already a, <laughs> a huge, uh, a huge achievement. Of course, um, it's a responsibility. You know, when you are uh, publishing something on the internet, you always have to do. You always have to be aware that it can reach many people in a positive or in a negative way. You have to remind this. It's in the public uh, sphere, in the public world, so you have to be very careful. So when I was a kid, the internet didn't exist, and it started when I was a teenager, when I was about your age. When you are uh, creating something uh, new and publishing it, you have to be careful. So for me, when I'm doing it, I'm trying to give my best, and of course, if it influences people, it's a big honor, but a big responsibility also. Well, voilà. Hello. 
Hello! Oh, a boy finally! What's your name? Nice to, nice to meet you. And um, how did your childhood impact on your drawings? When I was much, much younger, I was somehow a, a troubled child, like I had a lot of energy, I hyperkinetic uh, child. During the first years, I had some difficulties uh, at school, I didn't have uh, uh, such good notes. So for me, drawing was a, a way to to be good uh, because I was not so good in the other uh, stuff so it was really helpful to give me confidence and uh, drawing was uh, an escape you know <laughs> it was a magic escape a magic moment where I could spend hours uh, thinking about something else relaxing enjoying and seeing that I could uh, do something good uh, and so it started very early until recently so now I'm also into music and video so I'm not drawing every day like I was drawing a couple of uh, uh, many years ago when I was younger but uh, it helped me like it could help a, a child doing sport or, do, or doing music or just having a passion going to the cinema but the useful thing it is uh, it, it was a productive uh, activity so it was just not about consuming a movie or consuming anything because it was a productive activity I invested into myself and I would advise you as young people to do the same, invest in something that would make you uh, richer, but not uh, money speaking, but you that would enrich you. So that uh, it's the same when you are studying, you know, you are enriching yourself, giving yourself value for the future. So that's the best way to, you could do it in any activity, drawing, economics, marketing, mathematics, as long as you do something and that you improve yourself in, in something, then you, you would, uh, I think, uh, um, prepare yourself for a successful future. So for me, it was drawing, but for you, it could be anything else. Thank you. You're welcome. Hello. Hello, what's your name? My name is Helen. Hello. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Um, I'm going to present an artwork that I drew according to the Yeah? Wow. Um, in this artwork, I was inspired by the movie Aladdin, you scenes. Yes. Um, and I was going to ask you, what would you do? in my place and drew this picture as um, three pictures over here is uh, extracted from my team. I see that the quality of the drawing is very good. Uh, I think it's perfectly drawn. You are a very talented drawer. But for me to be able to evaluate the, the pencil versus camera skills would have been nice to see it with the photo behind. <laughs> you have a... You have a... <laughs> I see one of your friends doing some things like that. Oh, it's me! <laughs> I see you! <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> I just wanted to ask you, if you were in my place and you were drawing this piece, what would you have changed your... Ah, okay, so just for the drawing. <laughs> so you told me that you took it from Aladdin's uh, uh, scene. I would like. I would think it would be nice to to change it. Maybe you could use the same character, but use another environment. So instead of the bottle of water, you could put them, let's say, in a wallet. Just thinking about that, or in a uh, in a com on a computer or something. Just anything else than what's uh, happening in the movie scene, so that you are not copying exactly. You know, you are changing and you are adding creative value. So like this, you know, Disney cannot say, oh, she drew exactly the same uh, than what's happening in our uh, movie scene. It's very nice, you have some drawing skills, but you also have to have imagination and uh, creativity. So uh, for that, you need to change your reference and your source of inspiration. You don't need to invent something from scratch or from nothing. You just change what you see and uh, what are your sources of inspiration. Thank you. You're welcome. Hello. Hello. Yes, Another boy. I was wondering if you wanted to develop any new techniques. 
Yes, of course. I'm always trying uh, to develop uh, new uh, new techniques. Um, so, in, besides pencil versus camera, I developed many other techniques. Uh, I developed uh, a photo concept uh, showing two landscapes up and down. But uh, right now, I'm really looking for a next, uh, next concept. I'm thinking about, uh, in the graphic uh, art, I'm thinking about mixing painting and um, photography. So I would take a photo, print it, and uh, do uh, a painting, realistic painting, directly on the printed photo. It requires different skills, but that's the idea that I would like to, to develop in the future. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> My name is Leanne Hajani. And um, to begin with, in this unit, we worked on changing uh, a, a picture into an art piece. I would love to know how you interpreted your thoughts, hobbies, and culture in, in, this art, in these art pieces. Well, um, in my, my culture in the pencil versus camera series, I think is uh, quite visible. Belgium is very well known for um, surrealism, so I would say that uh, that my drawings are a lot uh, in the surrealist movement, directly from uh, Salvatore Dali uh, and uh, René Magritte, who is another famous surrealist uh, Belgian uh, artist painter from the past century. I also um, try to convey uh, universal messages, so it's not 100% about my culture. This series uh, shows photos from many places around the world, not only Belgium, it's, uh, let's say, a European culture. And I hope I can travel uh, a little bit in other countries. So was photo photography one of your hobbies? Yes, definitely. It was uh, one of my hobbies, so I started studying uh, journalism like uh, 10 years ago already. Time is flying. And before that, I was, um, I was an illustrator, a cartoonist. Photography became my passion after drawing when I did my uh, journalism uh, uh, studies. So I tried to mix these uh, two disciplines, these two passions. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you for your nice questions. Hi. <laughs> Hello. I have a short question, and my question is, um, what's your feeling knowing that over a hundred students have been learning your techniques and um, practicing? First, what's your what's your name? Chantal. Chantal. That's nice. It sounds very French. Um, <laughs> so, well, it's, I'm very proud, honored, and for me, uh, it's uh, such a pleasure to, to see that my techniques and my art uh, is being uh, used and uh, is inspiring students like you so far away from my country in an international school. It's amazing. That's what I'm doing art for, really. It's uh, the purpose of... Uh, of uh, my uh, all of my artistic projects it's the only thing i want is to inspire young people like you so i'm feeling uh, blessed uh, happy and honored and i hope that it helps you also to express some ideas and to be creative and to be uh, to surprise other people like i'm trying to do with my art surprise people so Yes, it's only only happiness and pleasure <laughs> to see you and see the result of uh, my work. <laughs> yes, we have learned a lot about your techniques and I hope it will inspire lots of students. Thank you. That's so cute. Thank you, Chantal. Hello. How, hello, my name is Dina and I wanted to know what inspired you to create the art technique Pencil versus Camino. Well, basically, like I said before, pencil versus camera is a mix of drawing and photography. So it's a very good question. But um, I was inspired to do this uh, concept because I saw uh, some other artists mixing photography and photography and some others mixing drawing and drawing. But I never saw, it. I never saw um, artworks mixing photography and drawing in the same uh, frame. And I never saw 
uh, drawing and photo uh, with um, a creative drawing. You know, it sometimes it was a drawing like showing exactly what's happening on the on the photo, but it's, it was never changing the reality at one hundred at one hundred percent. So this was my. Uh, um, my purpose, my goal when I started this series and the source of inspiration, yeah, it's, um, let's say that uh, I, I love surrealism again, so I wanted to do surrealistic drawings, surrealistic artworks. I have a lot of inspiration and love for art in general because um, in my family, my mother is a dance choreographer. In general, I like to be creative and to to always create new things to produce art in general. That was wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, so my first question is, do you use art to express your emotions and feelings? Yes, definitely. Every artwork may be a pencil versus camera or a photo or a single drawing or a painting usually reflects one specific moment of my life really uh, now that I'm doing it more professionally and for a living uh, of course I'm trying to leave my emotions and my uh, feelings aside and not to let too much of me uh, inside uh, my professional projects but since recently Every personal project that I was doing, of course, was uh, based on uh, something that I lived, something that I experienced. I was there to take the photo, so it was a, a place, a location that I, uh, of course, that I visited. So I did something in this place. I met some people. And of course, when it's a portrait, it's also very personal. But this is when these are personal projects. Of course, when it's more professional and uh, not artificial, but uh, let's say prepared, uh, there is a little bit less of affective in it. And my second question, from all your drawings, which one is your favorite? I always choose the same three or four images that I like to highlight. And I would say that I like the one with the lion in, in color. Uh, in, that was, this one was taken in Tunisia. It took me quite a lot of time. Um, and I would say this is um, my favorite. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> yes, hello, what's your name? My name is Lian. Lian? This is my first project as a camera. Very nice. Oh, yeah, Sarah, I can see it. Um, uh -huh. What do you think of my artwork as a story, and how do you think I can develop a later on? Yes. But I will see if if your teacher sent it to me, because it's yeah I can see it I have it wait yeah I, I can see it because here on the Skype the quality is very bad but your teacher sent it to me and I have in front of me in better quality so I can see a word saying your bathroom the product lines are first the almost yeah. bathroom jacuzzis and so on so it's like some kind of advertising and then yeah. you drew a guy uh, with a towel. It's in a jacuzzi, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's lovely. Uh, I like it because uh, you added some creative character in it. It's not just uh, you just you don't, didn't redrew somehow the the jacuzzi. You uh, you you changed the reality and you added something that's matching the photo. So a guy cleaning, you know, and uh, and it's funny because the guy looks is not. 100% uh, realistic. It looks like more yeah. comics. It's some yeah. kind of comics uh, character, and uh, it, it it makes me think about Sponge Bob Bob the Sponge. I don't know if you if you know him. Yeah. Somehow the face. So it would have been cool to do Bob the Sponge in the water. So I think it's a it's a very nice uh, drawing. Just maybe the guy you could. I see that you drew him like cleaning. You could have uh, drawn like. Um, how to say in English, a sailor or something like that, so that it's connected with the water, or even Bob the sponge, you know, because it's a sponge, it absorbs water, would have been a connection with the weather and the jacuzzi. Congratulations, I wouldn't say much about it, just, uh, it's just uh, perfect. <laughs> in conclusion, we would like to thank you for your time, we enjoyed our time with you, and we are waiting for your visit in future. Thank you. I hope I can visit you. <laughs>